Now it's pretty obvious that in the last sort of 10, 15 years, technology has changed all of our lives in many ways. And especially in the last sort of year with the coronavirus pandemic, we've been using it more than ever to keep in contact with family and friends. And us gardeners are often known as sort of maybe old fashioned and things like that. But actually, smart gardening is a thing. And there is a lot of technology that does help us in the garden. So today's video, I'm going to be speaking to you all about um, the seven th ways that technology helps us in the garden to be more productive and to grow more. So as you may already know, I actually use quite a lot of technology in the garden. I use uh, digital to-do lists, I use the greenhouse that's behind me, which is a harvester, which is completely automated, and many other ways as well, which I will speak about today. But as I said earlier on in the video, us gardeners, often the stereotype of a gardener is someone who's a bit older maybe, or a bit more old-fashioned, and sort of I think smart gardening is sort of changing that now because it is a technologically advanced thing um, when you actually get into gardening and if you look in the right places. So let's get into the video but before we get started make sure you go down below hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon to make sure you're notified next time I upload a video. So my first point is actually automation and automation comes in many forms for example this harvest greenhouse here that is a newly started company and these can water themselves automatically on solar power from their own rain rainwater sort of source um, they also tell you the moisture temperature everything like that and if you've got them plugged into the mains they um, they can heat themselves and they have grow lights and things like that whenever your plants need it and I'll link harvest down below but also it's not only these sort of things that are sort of automated in the garden you can actually get automated watering systems that aren't just in these greenhouses you can get ones for basically any part of your garden that you plug into a hose pipe and you can also get automated heating and grow lights in many other forms as well and automation is a really great way if you have a job that means you're away from home or you're quite busy and you're um, not always home to water and heat your plants or check on them then this is a really good way to do it and a lot of them are actually connected to your mobile phone so wherever you are as long as you've got Wi-Fi or an internet connection then you can check on all of your plants and on your greenhouse and the next way that technology helps us in the garden is with productivity and I use this quite a lot and I use a lot of digital to-do lists and apps on my phone that can help me to keep sort of everything in track so I know um, what I need to be doing when I need to be doing it and when I need to be doing it by and things like that this really helps with having a productive vegetable garden and also I use this in many other ways in my life with my schoolwork, especially now we're an online school I need to keep um, accountable and things like that when I'm doing online school to make sure I know what I need to be doing and when I need to be doing it so I don't get overwhelmed but as this video suggests in the garden I use it quite a lot um, because I'm starting to use more as well my phone calendar and my google calendar to put when I need to be sewing things and I can you can also set on um, calendars a repeat event so if you want to do succession sewings you can set it to remind you a certain time or in a certain time frame so maybe every 21 days or something to sow some lettuce then your phone can do that for you and community for gardeners is actually quite an important part of being a gardener because we like to help each other out maybe give each other free plants that we've propagated and things like that and that's why especially at the moment with the pandemic it's really good that there's an online community, for example, on my YouTube channel and my social media, and also on Facebook groups and f other forums online. And this is probably one that I use the most because um, I'm in quite a lot of gardening groups on Facebook and I'm quite an active member of quite a few of them. And I like to ask questions and also answer other people's questions who might be new to a topic or new to gardening. And this is probably the best part of technology. And technology often, often gets quite a bit of um, bad news, really. But actually, it's quite a good thing with community and uh, socialising online with people who are learning the same skill as you or something because you can really help each other out. But don't get me wrong, this doesn't beat speaking to someone in person, but it's a good alternative. For example, one online community that I'm quite a big part of or starting to be a big part of is the Harvest Forum. And Harvest, the people who make my greenhouse, actually have a forum online, which I'll link down below or you can find it through clicking community on their website. 
um, and it has, you can ask questions, not just about harvest greenhouses, but also all about um, things like anything to do with gardening, really, and especially growing food. And I really think you should check that out. And the next one is planning your garden. And technology is really helpful with this. Most landscape and garden designers now actually use technology as their sole way of designing and um, expressing their designs. So I use this probably more about researching when things should be planted and where they like to be planted and pruning and things like that. But a lot of people do use things like the Grow Veg um, Planner or Google SketchUp to actually design out their garden, put what needs to go where. I like to do pen and paper personally, but a lot of people do like to use technology. And things like Google SketchUp are actually completely free, so it's a really accessible way of making really neat designs of your garden. And I'd imagine there's also a way of printing that out as well, so you can have a physical copy as well, which is really useful. And another part of planning your garden on technology is actually, as I said earlier, with the calendars, is that you can actually put when you need to be sowing things in your calendar so that you don't miss a sowing and don't, or a succession sowing or something like that. So you've always got a good continuation of harvest. Education is a big part of gardening now because not actually many young people, like myself, do garden because it's sort of a dying, a dying thing. Um, and that's why I make these videos, is to try and inspire more people, especially younger people, into gardening to keep this amazing hobby alive. And for this education, there's people like myself and other YouTubers like Hugh Richards and bloggers and things like that, teaching you all about plants and gardening, growing your own food, house plants, whatever you like. And there's also other platforms like, as I said, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and there's also Skillshare. And Skillshare is uh, an online course thing. It's basically Netflix for online courses, so you pay a monthly fee. And there is a free trial as well. I think it's a month free trial. I'll actually be putting my first online course on there in a couple of months. So that's really exciting, so make sure you watch out for that. Um, but I'll actually put a link down below that will take you to Skillshare, where I think you can get a free trial from that as well. And there are plenty of other online course um, providers online, such as Hughes Abundance Academy and many other websites as well that have online courses on them that are great for gardening. But Skillshare is just the one that I'm going to use because it's a, a bit easier to use, I think. The next way that technology helps gardeners is actually by being able to grow all year round. For example, this harvest greenhouse, it's well insulated and if it's plugged into the mains, as I mentioned, it can be heated as well and have grow lights for when the days are shorter. And this means you could probably grow most crops through the winter unless it's a, a really hot or heat liking plant, such as tomatoes. But there's still a really good possibility that you could do that. And that's the thing, it's worth experimenting with. But things like greenhouses like this, or even the one over there, that's a bit more rudimentary that I made myself, um, it'll help you grow through winter. Mine still gets warm as well. But in the, in the sun, it doesn't get as warm as this, so that's because this has more clear panelling on it. Mine's just a few sides of glass. And I'm actually thinking of putting a glass roof on my one soon, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that if I do make a video about that. But this harvest greenhouse, I've actually got some stuff growing in there now, um, and this is quite exciting because it's um, my first time growing in this, actually. I've got some onions and I've got some uh, salad or mixed salad. And that's the thing, growing doesn't have to stop in winter. Growing can carry on. Even if it's not things in your greenhouse you're growing, there are many things that you can plant in autumn or late summer that will go all the way through winter, such as brassicas or maybe some salad things like Swiss chard and things like that. And they're all quite hardy and you can, make, uh, you can get them to make it through the winter. And one proving of this is actually, I've got a kale plant just behind the camera actually, that's coming up to two years old now. I call it the kale tree, um, and, or maybe it should be the kale dinosaur soon. Um, and that's actually, I planted that in 2019, and it hasn't gone to seed yet, which is quite exciting. I'm thinking of pruning it soon because it's getting quite tall, and it might stop it from going to seed. One technology that I find quite useful is you might be able to spot up there, I've got a little weather station. This has got an, an, an anemometer and it's also got a thermometer and rain gauge and pressure sensor or a barometer 
um, and things like this on it, which really helps when you're trying to plan when it's the best time to start planting in your garden or even what to wear when you go out in your garden because it can get quite chilly. And actually, to be honest, my hands are quite cold at the moment. I think it's about three or four, five degrees at the moment in our garden. And this can be really useful as well um, to predict because it says uh, 12 hour forecasts and also with the pressure. If you look into it and stuff, you can actually learn how to predict using that pressure and things. Normally, if it's low pressure, it's a bit more predictable, a bit calmer. And if it's uh, higher pressure, that's because that means it'll... Higher pressure means it's going to be a bit more um, blustery like this and um, uncontrollable, unpredictable maybe. And most of the wind is actually from when there's a high and a low pressure and they come next to each other like we're changing at the weather moment in the weather systems. The wind goes from high pressure to low pressure. Thank you so much for watching this video and I really hope you did enjoy and I'm actually filming on my phone at the moment because um, it's snowing outside and it's not really the best weather to get my camera out. So I really hope you did enjoy. If you did then there will be two other videos up here for you to watch from my channel afterwards. So please make sure you go down below, hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon to make sure you're notified next time I upload a video. I'll see you next time.